Hey folks, it's Grimlet from NatchEvil.com, and this is a man in a bee costume. I don't think I can talk to him. Lily had never seen such an unhappy man in a bee costume before, but she also hadn't really traveled much. I'm sure it happens all the time. Um... Uh-huh. It was hopeless. The man in the bee costume couldn't hear Lily from there. Well, what about this lantern? Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. Well, we might be able to help him later, but not today. Right now, all we have is this ball of wool, and that is sacred. Yeah, we're gonna go in the meeting room, yo. Huh. Okay. There's a slice of cheese. There lay a slice of Swiss cheese. There was never any cheese in the convent. Mostly just holes. Can I get that plate? I don't think I can get anything else. Lily had had to use a feather duster in the convent on more than one occasion, and sometimes she secretly tried it. Hmm. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. No, I can't reach any of this. What about this chair leg? A chair leg served there as a bar. There was definitely a good story in there that Lily would never hear. That's a pity. I'd love to know what that was about. Is that from the previous game? You know, if you know, leave a comment. Somebody had left their credit card in their coat pocket. A certain... Hey! That was Dr. Marcel's credit card. How about that? I feel a prank coming on. Alright. Well, we got a slice of cheese, and Video Game Logic says that when you need a punch card, you, uh, you go for Swiss. Yes. Yes, I did figure this out. Why couldn't you? Huh. Uh. Lily had inadvertently broken off the leg of the chair. Oh. It was as pointy as a knife. Hopefully the funny little rabbit hadn't seen anything. Damn it. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? Sure. See you around. Yeah, that was freaky. Lily had inadvertently... It was a... Hmm. We'll have to deal with that later. Grab that. Can opener. Ow! But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not oh, come on. sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? It's a See you around. It's a can opener. Come on. Were there other Belgian pizza delivery services in the area? I don't know. Let's grab it. Hmm, there's a telephone. I don't want to use a telephone yet. What's in the fridge? Blue blueberries. Grab that. Green broccoli. Grab that. Red tomatoes. Grab that. Yellow bananas. Grab that. What? No. Open that. Grab the bananas. Now you can close it. I'm sure this will come in handy later on. Hmm. Gonna need that too. Head outside. Hey, what the... Is that Harvey? Okay. What was the funny rabbit doing there? He seemed not to have noticed Lily yet. Huh? Okay, come back here. Surprised to see me again? Yes, keep kicking. You won't escape me again. And now hold still until I've decided what to do with you. Lily considered this option, but instead did the following. Hmm. Okay, let's see what our options are. There's Harvey. You must not contradict adults. Okay, I can contradict adults. There we go. 
Phantom. Lily couldn't see the Phantom's eyes. She just assumed that they were glowing evilly. Phantom. That's good. Keep nice and still. Rape is imminent. Okay, I've sunk to a new low. Rope jokes. I mean rape jokes. Well, it's a rope. Let's do it. Yeah, I know. Figure it out. Um, is that an owl whistle? It looks like it. Well, I can't really look at that. Here's a dragon's tail. Here's a chicken. Lily thought it was a bit cliche, but what was she going to do about it? Write a mean letter to Renee and Pokey? I don't see how it's cliche. It's a dead chicken in front of a dragon. Who's Renee and Pokey? Oh, they're the creators of the game. Lily didn't want to appear greedy. One feather would be enough, just like a Christmas dinner at the convent. <laughs> huh? Dragon tail. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, brave warrioress? Too weak? Hmm. <laughs> There's the dragon, and that's pretty much it. That's all there is to look at, except for the iron grate. The door was firmly locked. I don't think I can do it. Let's talk to the dragon, I guess. Lily had the feeling that these demons were getting bigger and more dangerous. Well, you are very brave to come so close to me. Can't you see my teeth, my spikes, and my sharp claws? Didn't anyone ever tell you to stay away from sharp objects? You did. That would be a tragic error. Hmm. Mess with that great. Whoa! <laughs> That's right. Run away. I'll get you next time. Gadget. Next time. I will d attempt to defeat this dragon with a feather. <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> In the end, he is just a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> there we go. Hey, I'm gonna try and open this iron grate, okay? The pain. You dang brat! Look what you did! Don't just stand there! Do something! Um... Okay, well, I guess I'll take this thorn out of your side. I mean, that would be... <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. That was close. I... Uh-oh. This demon had also made a mistake. It seemed that in certain situations, it really was necessary to handle sharp objects. Lily returned victoriously to reality. Hmm. That was a thing that happened. I have a rabbit with a knife in its head. Just just thought you should know. Well, let's go ahead and turn this power on. Sharp object power go! And let's stab this guy in the eye. Ah! My eye! Damn you! You disobedient brat! Damn! Lily fought for air. The phantom's grip was tight around her throat. Disobedient? 
It had said... That's just not funny. There's Harvey. The usually wise-ass stuffed rabbit hadn't made a sound. Maybe his feelings were hurt? Maybe so. Um, yeah, I'm gonna leave him alone for now, because I think he just sends me back into the phantom world. Let's go to the surveillance room. The door was firmly locked. Okay, that's a no. What about the bathroom? Alright. A bottle of starch? Well, Lily could really use it. For what? I don't know, but I will tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen. In an adventure game, everybody is a kleptomaniac. Let's see what else there is to look at. Lily liked needles. One time, she even secretly took one from home economics class. She kept it stashed in her mattress and only took it out at night when everyone was sleeping. I did the same thing with Barbie dolls. Ooh. But that was pretty. The towel reminded Lily of one that Mother Superior confiscated from her. Let's go ahead and grab it. Urinals of varying colors. It seemed the laundry there was neatly sorted and washed according to differently colored urinals. Lily thought that you can take cleanliness a bit too far sometimes. I, I guess so. Lily thought that he was a bit wishy-washy. No. Vitty, 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 whoosh! Welcome to the laundrette. That was your cue to say, this is supposed to be a laundrette, and I'll answer, of course! Oh, admittedly, it's a little rustic, but necessity is the mother of invention. Mother knows best. And now, we're doing our laundry in the urinals. Too wishy-washy for you? What other choice do we have? So... Exactly none. You don't have to, you know. Just make sure that the fabrics are separated properly. The toilet sanitizers really stay. We'll do the red laundry in the urinal with the red toilet sanitizer. Yellow laundry in the urinal with the yellow toilet sanitizer. Blue laundry in the urinal with the blue toilet sanitizer. And green laundry in the urinal with the green toilet sanitizer. If you want to try it, just show me some clothing with the right color. Then you can use the matching urinal as often as you want. Oh, okay. Now we have blueberries, green broccoli, red tomatoes, and yellow bananas, but they are not clothes. You do not put them in there. I don't know what will happen if you try. That was yellow enough. No, no, no. You're discoloring the laundry. This urinal is reserved for green laundry. If you've got some with you, you can use the urinal as long as you need to, but not before. See, so the puzzle is, if you haven't guessed, to find laundry of matching color. And we will, eventually. But first we're going to use this starch on the silk scarf. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. But as long as she didn't have a goal in mind, she preferred her laundry soft. She had had enough of starch laundry in the convent. Let me think. There's an order I'm missing. There's a step not here. Hey there, bee guy. What's up? Um, we're going to feed these guys the right here. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. What? How is this? Well, too short? It's right there. The idea was good. It, but it's right there. The idea was good. Meh. Oh, well, we'll just use this credit card. The idea was good. Okay, you're starting to piss me off. Who was afraid of the boogeyman? Let's give this guy a feather duster. He's been looking for it. What do you have there? A feather duster? Not that I would want to have a feather duster. Oh, no. No matter how pretty they look. Which doesn't mean that I can't hold it for a second. Just one little second. That would be completely harmless. Don't you think? Give it to me now! That's what she said. Whoa. Ah, oh, what a relief. And just look, I even found my old spare sheets. Here, go ahead and take it. You, you've earned it. 
All right, I have a white sheet. Now white sheets do not go in the color. Bad. We want to keep it white. After all, it's clean. It's freshly dusted. Okay, let's abuse this credit card in the can opener. <laughs> Dr. Marcel would surely be pleased. With the help of his credit card, Lily made some confetti. And who doesn't like confetti? Do, 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 do. All right, what's in here? What's up, B-Man? How you doing? Hello, stranger. Before you say anything, please take a deep breath. <gasps> and is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? <sighs> I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. Hmm. I, uh... I think I understand, Mr. B Man. It's what is free after all? Is it just the matter of choices or is there something deeper? I'm skeptical. Although I have the urge to spread my wings and fly off into freedom, can I really judge where my own boundaries lie? Something about this freedom stinks. Damn. That's deep, yo. Let's feed this scarf to moths. Lily had often wished to go to the zoo to feed the animals. It was even more beautiful than she had imagined. There we go. Now let's use the starch on the moth-eaten silk scarf. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. It wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. Well, who said it? Now Lily had a stiff towel with holes. It looks very familiar, doesn't it? Almost like a... punch card? Sometimes I, I really do adore adventure game logic. Hmm... There's to the hallway... There's a flap there. Let's open that. There's nothing in the flap. It's a viewing window. Um, yikes! What are you doing here? Are you actually dead? Uh huh. Uh -uh. Too bad. Aww. I could use a little entertainment, but the doctor told me not to talk to other people. At least not living ones. Sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Hmm. We need to convince her that we're dead. Let's do it. Sure, this makes sense. Oh dear. Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. I'll, I'll be honest. I had to look that one up. Because... What? Yeah, that. And here we go. Ghost costume. Yikes! A ghost! Uh -huh. How sweet! Finally someone to talk to. 
You have to help me. Dr. Marcel is wrongfully keeping me here in the asylum. Isn't there anything that you and your ghost buddies can do about it? Curse him? Deprive him of his sleep? Drag him into the seventh circle of hell and torture him for all eternity with red-hot needles? Oh, come on. I've done so much for you. I've performed obscure rituals, sacrificed chickens, danced naked. Although when I think about it, I'm not sure if it was really a ghost that asked me to do that. Ugh. I don't feel so well. Could you please take off your head while we're talking? Ooh, ooh. Oh man, you're not very talkative. Can't you help me at all? Sure. Uh-huh. Great! Look at this! The doctor is forcing me to knit these stuffed rabbits. No idea what he needs them for, but I'm not very good at it. Maybe you could lend me a hand. Wait! I'll push some of the fabric through the hatch. And now we have blue fabric. The rabbit was probably too young to talk. Off we go. Good luck, lady. Yeah. Blue fabric in the blue urine. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the blue urinal as much as you like. There we go. Okay. I, I will admit I have kind of deceived you guys a little bit because uh, if you haven't played this game, there's a door over here on the far right. With these people in it. Hey, look. Good enough. The pillow which he wore on his head seemed somehow out of place. It's wrong color. Lily had never seen such a happy girl. Lily wanted to be crazy when she grew up, too. Why wait? Lily wondered why the man looked so sad. He had such awesome friends. He had a pot on his head and sat behind a propped up piece of cardboard. That must be that God Mother Superior so often talked about. He does look a little like Jesus. Now I think, uh... The candle smelled wonderfully of honey and flowers. At least that's what Lily assumed. The flowers in the convent always smelled like insecticide. Lily liked to smell them nonetheless. Oh, we're grabbing this. Ow. Hello, Lip. You no, know, no, you go, know. go away, go away. And now we see how fun this system is. Fire powers activate! Is that a red curtain? The curtains had seen better days. At least better than Lily had seen. Grab that. What else is there? That's it. Let's talk to these people. Starting with God. Uh -huh. My goodness. Who do we have here then? Another player! Yippee. Don't pay any attention to him. Peter just sees blood all the time. He was born that way. <laughs> That's true. Peter suffers from color blindness. Struggle jug. Well said, loyal friend. We all have our crosses to bear. Oh, yeah? Do you all wake up every morning knowing that one day you'll lie dead at the foot of a traffic light? Not exactly. But Druggle Jug, for instance, mixes up his blues and greens. You can't really compare the two. Your girlfriend Petra mixes up her yellows and greens. She's not my girlfriend. And we, King Adrian, mix up our reds and yellows. You should have been there when we played the board game. Sorry, Peter almost choked to death. I wanted to end my misery. Afterwards, we decided never to play a board game again. Only fantasy role-playing games instead. You decided that. And what did we just say? It's so exciting! We are a group of adventurers in the legendary world of Hope Motigore. Oh, please, why don't you join us? Druggle Jug? Not so fast. If the Fair Maiden wishes to join us in battle, she must first prove herself worthy. She must complete a task that puts her heroic valor to the test. Just tell her to order a pizza already, so we can get on with it. Uh-huh. So be it. She shall order us 
pizza. Oh, okay. What, what kind of pizza? Um, I want broccoli on the pizza, but no tomatoes, please. Druggle jug. Oh, no broccoli. Druggle jug. Bananas aren't bad either, but I could just die for broccoli. Oh, yes. Please do. <laughs> for that, I'd even happily have bananas on a pizza. You only eat blueberries anyway. Yes. I like blueberries, but in this life, you never get what you want anyway. <clears throat> Upon the order of the king, blueberries will be banned from the pizza. Instead, knowest that tomatoes will grace the pizza dough from now on. But I don't like tomatoes. Lily had heard enough. It seemed impossible to get a pizza that everyone liked. Have you figured it out yet? You... Struggle Jug. Yeah, you heard him. Bringest thou the pizza first, then thou may join us in play. It's really easy. All you need are dust, pencil, paper. And don't forget to bring a tendency for humiliating yourself. Struggle Jug. I, I don't know if you guys know this. I have a set of dice that I always roll. Bones, as it were. Ooh, 11. Nice. And, uh... I, I can't stop playing with my dice. Colorblind. Um... Druggle Jug. Don't, Drog. You have to forgive him. He's colorblind, as we all are. Peter mixes up his reds and his greens. Adrian mixes up his reds and his yellows. Drogi mixes up his greens and his blues. And I mix up my yellows and my greens. Funny, isn't it? This will never come up again. What's up with that pillow? Um, you're probably wondering why Droggy has a green pillow on his head, right? Droggle Jug? My goodness, she's right. What on earth are you wearing? You're embarrassing me in front of my new subject. Droggle Jug. <laughs> yes, it is a little strange. Wait until you've heard the explanation. Today should have been Blue Pillow Day. <sighs> Druggle Jug. It's alright, Druggle Jug. We all understand. I just stole a green pillow. Where's Dr. Marcel? Uh, Druggle Jug, I believe our guest is searching for the tyrant known as Dr. Marcel. Deliver her thy news. Druggle Jug. Druggle jug, druggle jug, <laughs> druggle jug. Don't forget to mention the helicopter. Druggle jug. And was never seen again. Bravo. Well told, loyal friend. Since then, these lands have returned to the wise rule of a magnanimous king. We can do whatever we want. Does that mean I can finally sleep now? No. And now you know pretty much what happened in the first game. Druggle Jug there sort of explained it all. Well, let's go order a pizza. We'll just order one with bananas, blueberries, tomatoes, and broccoli, I, I guess. Welcome to Spamish Pizza Favorites. What? My name is Pokey. Can oh. I take your order? Um... Well, I'm the asylum, is that right? Yeah. I assume that we just shove it under the gate as usual. What toppings? Uh. Hello? Hello? Can I take your order? Uh. One with nothing coming up. Consider it done. It'll be about 30 to 45 minutes. Have a nice day. Christopher Lloyd is running out of work. Damn, fucking instantaneous or your money back. So, um, pizza. 